Yeah, rankings are still coming out on Tuesday. Why? Because it doesn't matter if the Ravens and Cowboys do a backflip, barrel roll, and score 75 points. They still ain't making this list. Crossy Posse Packer Nation. Welcome to another episode of Podcast, the podcast where you don't have to be a Packers fan, but it sure does help. I'm your host, Tom. All those Seahawks fans. <laughs> they flooded this channel last week, and they went, Tom, number nine? How could you have the Seahawks at number nine? Because you lost to the Giants, and I just knew it before it happened. Grassi, and today we are going to be taking a look at the top 10 teams heading into week 14 of the NFL. And boy, oh boy, do we got some movers and shakers on the top 10 this week. Of course, so many upsets occurred. You had the Seahawks lose to the Giants. You had the Washington football team take on and defeat the Pittsburgh Steelers. 72 Dolphins, clink, cheers to you. And you even had Baker Mayfield playing well. What? And so, let us begin. Starting off with number 10. I was going to put the Seahawks here, but, you know, you lost to the Giants. I'm putting the Miami Dolphins, who are sitting at 8-4. and four. Now, the Dolphins have, uh, Dolphins have made this list before, right? They were underneath the surface, and then they would jump up for a week. And be, eh, 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 eh. Then they would go back down, and they wouldn't be on the list. Then they'd go back, eh, eh, eh. and then they go back down. And so now, they're back up again. The defense continues to play pretty darn well. Yes, I know they played the Bengals, so really not much competition there, and the Bengals didn't even have Joe Burrow. But Tua, efficient, 296 yards and one touchdown. Miles Gaskin had a great day, 21 for 90 and 2 for 51 through the air. The defense forcing six sacks and two interceptions. And listen, listen, the Bills are obviously still the favorites over in the AFC East, but the Dolphins, they're like, hey, playoffs anybody? And, you know... I don't think they're going to go to the Super Bowl or anything. However, I think it is possible that, you know, they make it past the wild card round because that defense and those special teams can pull off some crazy things sometimes. And if Tua continues to take care of the football and plays efficiently, I think they'll be able to do enough to, you know, make some waves <laughs> in the playoffs. So right now, the Dolphins are sitting at number 10. Number nine, you got the Tennessee Titans sitting at eight and four. Well, they got punched right in the mouth by the Cleveland Browns. The one bright spot was, of course, Corey Davis going 11 for 182 yards and a touchdown. Where's the ugly part? That entire defense giving up 38 points in the first half. Now, they locked it down for the second half, though you could also argue that the Browns started playing a little bit more conservatively. They're barely ahead of the Indianapolis Colts right now who were able to get a win over the Houston Texans. And as we've said since the beginning, when Derrick Henry is going, they're good. Derrick Henry did not get it going, and I needed him to win my fantasy league this week, but I guess we're just all disappointed. So right now, the Titans are, again, one of those teams that it's a week-to-week -week basis. Sometimes they're going to be amazing, and sometimes this is going to happen. Number eight, you got the Indianapolis Colts. They kept it close in the first half with the Houston Texans, and I was like, oh, okay, this is going to be a game. Didn't really expect that. But then they shut out the Texans in the second half, and I feel like that's been the story. That's been the story with the Indianapolis Colts almost all season, in that it's a, it's a rough first half, the defense gives up some points, rah, and then the defense comes in the second half, and they're like, oh, yeah, no, we're going to be really, really good. They did the exact same thing to the Green Bay Packers. Rivers was solid, going 285 for two touchdowns. Taylor for over 90 yards. And the defense also really kept Deshaun Watson pretty grounded. He didn't really have a great day. So the Colts, again, they have a better defense than the Titans. They don't have the power running game. You know, the quarterbacks, you can say they're comparable between Phillip Rivers and, of course, Ryan Tannehill. But right now, I'm going to give the slight edge to the Colts just because of that defense, and they really can control games. Number seven, good God, what is this year? You got the Cleveland Browns. 
The Cleveland Browns have the same exact record as the Green Bay Packers. I mean, I'm no bishop, but I'm pretty sure that's blasphemy. Mayfield looked amazing. Looked um, 25 for 33, 334 yards, and four touchdowns. Nick Chubb decided to continue to just run like the little horse he is and get 80 yards. The defense, one interception, three sacks. They held Derrick Henry to 60 yards, which is the most impressive thing about this game. Now, as we talked about before, they definitely slowed down in the second half after scoring 28 points. But honestly, it was enough. They could play pretty conservatively for the rest of the game. The Browns, listen, I think that they uh, opened a lot of eyes this past weekend. Are they good? I like to think yes. It just is really hard for me to say yes because of, you know, everything. Browns are right now a playoff contending team. With that defense, when it decides to play well, and with that power running game, they could do some damage in the playoffs. I still can't believe this is happening. Number six, you got the LA Rams, and here we go. Jared Goff. We all hurt his feelings last week, and he's like, oh, I'm going to play like a big boy. 351 yards and one touchdown and a rushing TD as well. You also had Akers and Henderson do well on the ground. Not a ton of sacks, only two sacks for that defense, but they kept Murray in check really until the second half. But honestly, it was really until the fourth quarter when they allowed some points to be scored. So right now, the Rams are sitting atop the NFC West. The Seahawks are still, you know, they're around. I don't think they're going anywhere. But the Rams, as we have talked about in the past... They are one of the most balanced teams when they play well. The defense can give offenses fits, and the offense, when Jared Goff is remembering how to play football, can be really, really good. Are they going to be able to hold on to this and continuously be good all through the playoffs? I'm not going to hold my breath. Then number five, same place, you got the Green Bay Packers. At one point, the uh, Eagles got within a touchdown, and then the defense was like, no. I was like, oh, this is what a decent defense looks like because every now and then they, they poked their ugly head again and they were terrible. But listen, they did pretty damn good against this depleted Eagles offense. Had seven sacks on the day, Darnell Savage having the game ceiling interception, and that's just on defense. Over on the offensive side of the ball, you had Rodgers, 295 yards, three touchdowns. Jones, 15 for 170 yards and a touchdown, which was 77 yards in and of itself. And Devontae Adams, 10 for 121 yards and two touchdowns. The offense was rocking. They had like two drives where they went three and out and they kind of stalled a little bit. But overall, the Green Bay Packers played this pretty darn well. Even when the guy like Jalen Hurts actually came in and was like, hey, I'm going to take over for Carson Wentz. And the Packers are historically bad against mobile QBs, but they were able to get it done. So the Green Bay Packers showing off their offensive might once again, and they just keep on rolling. Number four, you got the New Orleans Saints. Taysom Hill, 232 yards, two touchdowns, and 14 carries for 83 yards on the ground, showing off that he's a dynamic QB. Michael Thomas getting involved with over 100 yards, and they had firm control over this game. They allowed nine points in the first three quarters, and I know the score was pretty close, but... They were pretty much in control for the duration of the game. Now, again, the Saints, they're going to be eyeing and seeing when Drew Brees can return. They have a tough game coming up with the Chiefs. And other than that, their schedule is pretty straightforward. Now, they are in control of their own destiny. If they do not lose another game, they will secure the number one seed in the NFC. But if they do drop a game... The Packers are right behind you. Number three... You got the Buffalo Bills. Yep. Remember when we were talking a few months ago about how Josh Allen was looking like he was in his MVP form? He came back last night. 375 yards, four touchdowns. Absolutely incredible. Even Cole Beasley, after being rock by babied in the end zone. Nine for 130 yards for one touchdown. Defense played well, forced two interceptions, had a 10-point lead at half. And basically, then they went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the 49ers, but they scored enough in the first half to get it done. This is what this team can look like when they're really good. Now, I know it's against a depleted 49ers squad, but I think credit still needs to be given here. The Bills have been playing some damn good football. Obviously, they lost on a Hail Mary, but honestly, besides that one play, they did enough to win that ball game. The Bills, I think, are dark horse contenders to potentially go to the Super Bowl for the AFC. They are going to have to get past teams like the Chiefs and the Steelers, but if Josh Allen is on like he was last night, 
they might be able to do it. Number two, you got the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, I guarantee you, there's going to be a lot of overreactions about this game, and people are going to have the Steelers drop way, way down within their rankings, and I'm not, I'm not ready to overreact just yet. Listen, they lost to the football team. That, that hurts. That, that can't feel good. Big Ben, 305 yards, two touchdowns, a costly interception. They had no run game without James Conner. They are definitely missing him. And let's be honest here. They went against a very, very good defense. Chase Young, Montez Sweat. Oh, man. They were rocking last night. Though I will say, they were shut out in the first quarter and they were shut out in the third quarter. And I, a lot of people are going to be like, oh, my God, this is the worst. But I let, let's look at this logistically. What other defenses are there in the AFC that they're going to have to contend with? Maybe the Colts, who the Colts have shown that they can allow a ton of points. The Chiefs, they don't really have that kind of defense. The Bills, eh, could go either way. And so I think that I'm not going to flip out the fact that the Steelers lost a football game and the fact that it was to an NFC East opponent. I think that, if anything, it's going to be about how the Steelers actually rebound. They're going to have a tough game with the Bills that is coming up. That is going to be a better test than what the Washington football team ever was. So that will be the time to panic if they lose against the Bills. But right now, the Steelers, you stay at number two. And plus, it was because urinating tree venmo me some money. So thanks for the 20. Then number one, you still have the reigning defending Super Bowl champions, Kansas City Chiefs. Now the Chiefs, they, they had their hands full with the Broncos. Patrick Mahomes, 318 yards, one touchdown. But for him, that's pretty pedestrian. And I will say that defense, Melvin Gordon ran all over them for 131 yards. In addition, the Chiefs run game was non-existent. Kelsey had a big day for 136 yards, as well as the Honey Badger getting two interceptions. And these are also tough games to judge because it is a divisional game. But considering the Steelers lost, I think the Chiefs still earn the number one spot right now because they are still the team to beat in the AFC. But let me know what you think down in the comments below. Who do you feel should be on this list? Do you think the Seahawks should be on here? Maybe? <laughs> no. But let me know what you think down in the comments below. You can always find me at TomGrassyComedy.com or at TomGrassyComedy on all social media. See down below. Check out podcasts on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play Music, Spotify, and of course YouTube. And a big shout and thank you to all the patrons over at Patreon.com slash TomGrassyComedy and the YouTube members. But thank you so much for watching. I'm Tom Grassy. And as always... Go back, go.